now on for an epic journey, a tale of heroism and adventure, and a rather lovely little lyrics number, as Julian Clary and his faithful pianist Russell go in search of their hero, Roger Whittaker. Wake up, Russell. I'm bored. Here we are in New York, in the city that never sleeps, and I'm bored. I'm bored, Richard. You got anything for me to read? <clears throat> Let's have a look here. Fashion section? I don't think so. I've got the sport section. Not your kind of sport, anyway. How about the accompanying pianist section? Don't be stupid, Russell. But I have got the visiting English, rather boring, with no neck heterosexual section. Try that. Thank you. And for me, the personal column. Well, let's have a look. Cervical caps. Do you want the phone number? No. Love puppy, I'll always love you. You're the best. Love diddle baby. Is that one of yours, Russ? No. Oh, look at this. Desperately seeking Julian, R.W. R.W. Who could that be? It's Roger. Roger Whittaker. Good Lord. He needs me. Desperately seeking Julian, R.W. Roger needs me. No, no Julian, Julian. Wait, wait, wait. We've, we've got a show to do. There's people waiting. They've paid money. Oh, well, give them their money back. Better still, just let them wait, because I'm off. I know. Look, why don't, we, why don't we do the show and then go and look for him? And that way, this film crew here um, could, uh, could film the quest and, and cut in with bits of the show. Oh, all right, then. But you're still boring. If they could see me now, that little gang of mine. I'm eating fancy chow and drinking fancy wine. I'd like those stumble bumps to see for a fact the kind of top drawer first rate. Chums I attract, all I can say is, wow, e look where I am tonight. I landed, pow, right in a pot of jam, and what a setup, holy cow. They'll never believe me if my friends could see me now. From London, England, Mr. Julian Clary. How kind, punters, thank you. My name is indeed Julian Clary, and I'm from England, and I hope we're going to get on. Um, I've, had a few, I've had a few dubious reviews so far. There was one in the New York Times that said that only 50% of my jokes work in New York. So I think we must all be prepared for a few, few dull spots. <laughs> a few quiet moments when we can just reflect on it. And whatever we feel like. Hello. How are you? Hi. We're horribly close, aren't we? <laughs> What's your name? John. John. Hello, John. Do you read the Village Voice, John? Yes. Did you see there was a there was a comment about me in there on the on the gossip column, describing me as a pert little pixie. <laughs> Shoddy journalism, I think. <laughs> Hello. You look very ordinary. <laughs> What's... You strive to be ordinary. I think you've succeeded. <laughs> Where are you from? Brixton. Brixton. <laughs> well, are you over here for a holiday or do you live here? Holiday. Holiday? You're just mincing around town, are you? <laughs> Having a nice time? Yeah. Have you been mugged yet? <laughs> no, I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> You're still waiting for that. There's a lot of it about, I hear. Now, there's some food arriving for somebody. <laughs> this table over here. I've got a, a void to fill. Quite a lot of food. <laughs> oh, 
All kinds of... No, no, I'm full as an egg, thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm a bit concerned, though, because, um... If you, if you eat while I'm performing, I might say something terribly amusing. It's not likely, I know. <laughs> but I might, and then you'll laugh, you'll laugh. <laughs> and a little bolus of food will shoot... <laughs> down the wrong hole. And I won't be able to live with myself. <laughs> Well, where are we going to find Roger? Leave it to me, Russell. I'm just going to follow my instincts. All right. Look at that. Reminds me of a donkey I once met on Blackpool Beach. Really? It's been up there for over 50 years, you know. Has it? It's given a lot of people a lot of pleasure. I can imagine. Still, that's New York for you. Indeed. <whistles> Bit forward, isn't it? Is that for you or for me, Russell? Me, I think. It's like being outside a building site. There's only one man who can whistle like that. It's Roger. 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 We're over Ro here, Roger. 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 Oh, he's getting in a cab. Ro Roger. Ro Roger. Gentlemen, may I help you? Yes, we'd like a cab, please. Would you like a cab or a celebrity? A celebrity. <laughs> celebrity! You have a nice day. Thank you very much. You're most obliging. You're not coming. Russell will give you a tip. Mind you, it might be a bit of a disappointment. Well, good heavens. Oh. It's the boys from Agnostic Front. I hope I'm not in any danger. I feel quite safe, I must say. My little heart's going, beating fast, but I feel quite safe. <clears throat> so how are you all? We're doing all right. We're currently working on a new album. You know, everything will be all right when we get it out. Hanging out in the studio, you know? Have you been busy with the bar, right? Yeah, we, we've been busy giving each other tattoos. Getting drilled. Playing, playing with each other. Oh, in a different sense. Boys know? will be boys, won't yeah. they? I guess. <laughs> you got a bear bit here. Look, can we have a look at this? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to get a tattoo with your name on it right there. Well, I was, I was about to suggest it. I'll give you the spelling later. <laughs> and you're very quiet, aren't you? Yeah, I've got a lot of brass. He's like the strong side. I'm the leader. I'm the leader. leader. I'm just quiet over here. Guys. What instrument do you play? I'm the drummer. <laughs> He likes beating on, on things, you know. Yeah. What well, drummers usually do. Yeah. And you sing, I, I yeah. guess. I have to guess. Excuse me? You're the lead singer. I'm the lead singer, yeah. And you probably sing as well. A little bit. Yeah. Back up. And I'm the comedian before the act goes on. He's well, the warm-up show. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. What has four legs in each sense? Two uncles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Is that it? Four legs? I still don't guess it. <laughs> Because you boys, you do have a rather aggressive image, um, don't you? Yeah, it's just only style in our music. music, you know. It's only uh, only the music. Only our music. We're really nice guys when you get to know us, you know. Well, I like you already, but what about what about the other side of your personalities, the sort of uh, the female side? Don't you ever feel? Oh, we love females. We love females. No, we have Hold on, let's get some females going. Yo, Forty Second Street, right? Hey, yo, honey, come here, my so mate, <laughs> come here, get in. I'm talking. No, about I know that girl. <laughs> They didn't respond, strangely. I'm talking about the, the female side of your own personalities, the female within the male. <laughs> do you follow? There's no yin in our yang. <laughs> you follow? I think I do. I think All I'm, right. I'm barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Roger. Yeah? You're, you're no relation, are you, to, to another Roger? Roger Whittaker. Who's that? Oh, no, no, oh, not at all. That's the guy that you had at a restaurant, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's the guy that Vinnie brought in a restaurant and he came with a beard and dreadlocks. Oh, that old guy. The he old... has got a beard, young man. He's homeless Yeah, but he's got now. dreadlocks now. He's in New he's York. Homeless. He's homeless. He plays a mean guitar. Yeah. I heard he's uh, uh, mediocre. Is that Roger out the window? Oh, him over there. Hey, yo, Roger. It is. He's got a beard. Yo. Hey, yo. Yo, Roger! Hey! Hey, that's Roger! That's Yo. my friend! <laughs> Yo, we're gonna open tab at 225, man. <laughs> oh, there's a policeman. Can they're the policeman friendly here? 
No, uh, no, no, no. I think you should just put it this way. If you're ever you're in trouble, off, don't run to a police. Just run. Run to, like, the nearest... Donut stand. Nearest <laughs> donut stand. <laughs> What would you do if you saw a bit of a, a mugging going on out there? Then what would I'll make sure I get the wallet. Get that wallet. I do have a boyfriend. Um, as I've already told you, I'm not bragging. I don't want to keep on about it. But uh, we go on romantic holidays together to romantic places wearing matching pastel shorts and uh, a great deal of Givenchy pour homme. <laughs> and we went away recently. We went on a package holiday to the Algarve in Portugal. And we met an interesting couple while we were there called Mr. and Mrs. Plank. <laughs> I thought, what a marvellous name. No matter how depressed you were, you'd just say to yourself, wouldn't you? What was your name? Tim. You'd say to yourself, my name is Mr. Plank, and you'd immediately feel a lot perkier. <laughs> well, we were standing in the reception one day, my boyfriend and I, and um, in they came, the Planks. <laughs> I said, here come the Planks, look. I was in the aquamarine shorts, as I recall. My boyfriend was wearing the lemon yellow, so hides the stains. And we were standing there, just putting our names down for the candlelit dinner. And in they came, as I say, the Planks. And Mr. Plank charged up to me, and he said, Evening, lads, because he was from Wales. I said, Hello. He said, Can you tell... Can, no, I can't do it now. Can you... No, that's not right. I'll paraphrase. He said, Can you tell me how many... Can you tell me how many kilometres? Is that right? Is that Welsh? Can you tell? I, I won't. <laughs> I've lost the power of speech now. Can you tell me, he said, how many kilometres it is to Albufera? No, he didn't. It, uh, thank you, Russell. Yes, it's gone horribly wrong. He said... <laughs> Sorry, we'll cut that bit. No one need ever know. <laughs> It's our little secret. He said, can you tell me? No, he didn't. <laughs> I don't know if I can be bothered with this, really. <laughs> Who cares what he said, really? <laughs> it's interference, you see. I'm, I get this interference on, uh, on my, in my brain waves. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a psychic message, I think, from my... <laughs> from my little dog, Fanny the Wonder Dog, <laughs> who, uh, who was sitting at home in front of the fire back in England. And last night I was sitting watching The Golden Girls, just for a change, and I suddenly, I said the word biscuit. Apropos of nothing, biscuit. <laughs> so I think that Fanny was sitting there thinking I could not do with a biscuit. <laughs> and somehow the words come out of my mouth. So if I suddenly say I feel like a crap, <laughs> so, <laughs> which would be completely out of character. You all know that it's Fanny the Wonder Dog speaking, <laughs> not me. Another thing she does, she talks in her sleep, bless her, sometimes. So I might just stand here and go... <laughs> and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Roger's jacket. How much did you give him for it? Very little, as a matter of fact. Very little? <laughs> Don't you realise this, this should be in a museum? I had no idea. It's a museum piece. So it's Roger. Did he, um, did he leave you a forwarding address at all? Uh, not really, but you could check the pockets. He's very careless, very cavalier, I must say. What's in here? Oh, there's something in here. It's a Polaroid. Is that Roger? 
Oh, it is. It's ah, it is Roger. Likeness. Who'd have thought he'd be so athletic at his age? <laughs> So you really can't help me with, with whereabouts of the of the owner, the I very no, careful owner. No idea. Dear. Do you get many celebrities in here? Occasionally, yes. Who have you had in? Uh, Rosanna Arquette. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Diana Ross. What did she buy? She bought a doll that was, looked just like her. As a matter of fact, it was a Diana Ross doll. <laughs> in a box and everything wrapped up, was it? The box, yeah, it was all wrapped up with her face and her name. Who else? And Madonna. Ooh. Madonna bought my stripper costume. But I got it back. <laughs> soiled? Clean? So, no, soiled. soiled. But it's good. It's her soil. Well, it doubles the value, doesn't <laughs> doubles it? Doubles the value, yes. But who else? Who else? Um, oh, Debbie Gibson. Where? Over there. Oh, so it is. It's like I'll have a woman. She won't mug me, will she? I don't think so. Yeah. Same thing you're doing here, Julian. <laughs> just sort of rooting around. Yeah, just, you know, I was on tour and my clothes got kind of messed up, so I figured I'd replace them. Well, they would. It's bound to happen. Yeah. those long, arduous tours. <clears throat> Here's something that might keep you company. It's only my fun. I do like your earrings. The Thank shirt you. you can keep, but I love the earrings. <clears throat> Gotta be. So what are you up to now, now you've just finished touring? Have a little rest? Um, I'm gonna start another See? album, actually. Start another album. Yeah, How many albums do we need from you? I suppose you just go on and on, then you end this album. Definitely. I won't go away, I'm warning you. But you're very prolific, <laughs> aren't you, with your writing? Yeah, I like to. Very prolific. I like to write constantly. But no stopping her. This has got to be um, <clears throat> Esther Williams. I'd say so. Give it a sniff and see. <gasps> chlorine. Let's see. Mm, no chlorine. Oh. Hopefully they washed it before they put it on the rack. I think I've seen Bruce Springsteen wearing this. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it wouldn't show his biceps. <laughs> I think that would look kind of cool on you. <clears throat> I read somewhere you've got perfect pitch. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a C flat? Well, C flat is otherwise known as a B, so... Oh, hush my mouth. <laughs> give, give me a B flat. Mm -hmm. Or just give a me B, a B. Well, here's a B. Mm -hmm. I'll flatten it myself. Is that a B? That's a B. I wouldn't know, of course. <laughs> Marvellous. You a could gift. go check it. When what you a know. gift from God, Debbie. Oh, gee, thank you. This must be Cher's evening wear. Oh, it's got to be. <coughs> it's, this is kind of Nancy Sinatra. These boots are made for walking, I think. I think this is Nancy Reagan's one, this one. Look, there's a dope burn on it. <laughs> Definitely, for the See, inauguration. See, you think Nancy was wandering around the village and she sold it to in the a, store? In a haze, I expect so. <laughs> what about um, when are you playing in England next? I'm not really sure. I've played there um, twice before, though. Twice? Yeah. Lord. I can't get enough of you, obviously. When um, when you're going back, then you're not you're not quite I'm sure. I'm not quite sure. No. Do they like you there? Well, they seem to. Well, the first show we did was at um, a small theater, and um, of course that was a few years ago. And then I opened for uh, for us at Wembley. You opened for Bros? Yes. Damn! I thought there was a queue for that job. Well, it's marvelous. Now, are you doing panto this year? No. You probably guessed by now, I had a Catholic upbringing. <laughs> I think it shows. I was raised by Benedictine monks. They're the ones who wear the long black robes right down to the floor. The little hood at the back. Quite nice. Sort of thing George Michael would wear to a funeral. And there was one particular monk who was a great influence on me. He was called Father Fox. And he was the musical monk, or the boogie brother, as we called him. <laughs> and I liked him because he had great style, which, you know, wasn't, wasn't, there wasn't much style around the monkery. He would swish down the corridors, and his hair was worn in a little quiff, not unlike yours. <laughs> and he could also put, put on far more spectacular masses than any of the other monks could muster, with clouds of incense and frequent costume changes behind the tabernacle. <laughs> and I was very attracted by this kind of Cirque du Soleil approach to religion. <laughs> and I desperately wanted to be a part of it. So I worked my way up through the ranks of the choir boys, which uh, didn't take me long. <laughs> a couple of wet afternoons. Until I became an altar boy. And it altered me, I can tell you. I was given the, the pivotal role of ringing the bell at the moment of the transubstantiation. 
transubstantiation. Try saying that with a saveloy in your mouth. <laughs> and I was just getting ready for my big moment when I suffered some interference from my fellow acolyte, who was a boy called Collins. I said, leave me alone. <laughs> Poking me and prodding me, he was. We're supposed to be angels, I said. <laughs> Bog off, smelly. <laughs> Well, that was too much for Collins, I'm afraid. He gave me a big shove like that, and I tumbled down the altar steps, cassocks to the wind. My bells went I know not where. <laughs> Father Fox was red in the face, even underneath his foundation. Stormed off the altar, never spoke to me again. <coughs> Collins and I decided to have it out once and for all at the school gates at four o'clock but it was raining, so we cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> now then, head for the high ground. That's how I'll find Roger. This looks like the right place for me. I think I'll get a one-way ticket. I seek him here, I seek him there. I seek a Roger everywhere. But then don't we all? Now, where would Roger go for some hard-wearing khaki, apart from an army barracks? I feel quite dizzy, looking down on all those erections. It's a wonder I'm not having a nosebleed. Who's that down there? Nice of him, wasn't it? You must be able to see Roger here somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry. Fanny just had a fur ball. <laughs> You meet the nicest people in New York, and who should I bump into here but young Danny from Anthrax. Hello. Have you ever bitten the head of a chicken? No. You don't, you don't no, do anything. Turkey. No, I'm only turkey. Kidding. Anthrax, that's the band. What, what does anthrax mean? Uh, it's a cow disease. A cow disease? Mm -hmm. Oh, have you had that personal experience of this? Or? Uh, not really. A cab driver in Ireland had some, though. Nasty. Your complexion's oh. lovely. Are you wearing makeup? No. Not a smidgen? Never. <laughs> but when you go to England, what sort of places do you play there? Uh, last time we played Wembley and NEC. Well, that's huge, isn't it? Very big. And does everyone come and shake their heads like that? They go crazy. And what are you doing at the moment? What, what are you doing work-wise? Uh, we're getting ready to go back out on tour with us, Slayer, and Megadeth. You're remarkably healthy looking for a, for a heavy metal person. Don't you drink bourbon all day long and uh, no. abuse your body? Once in a while. I can't see how people do that every day. I had a nasty experience with a taxi driver. Yeah, that's like the one thing in New York, you know, if you're a foreigner and you come off come off the plane, get in the taxi cab and tell him where to go, and he takes you for a nice ride for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Not much you could do about it if you don't know where you're going. Yeah, just take your purse with you, really. Yeah, take, take a lot of money. Have you, um, have you got a philosophy of life just out of interest? I don't know. I live today like it's the last day of my life. You doing panto this year? Excuse me? Well, it's not only ashtrays you can pick up in the souvenir shop here. I met these three French sailors. Hello. 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 And hello. hello. They don't speak any English at all, but that doesn't matter, does it? Um, où est votre bateau? In the port of Manhattan. Sorry? In the port of Manhattan. It's in the port. Best place for it, really. It's... Wouldn't you say? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think he's bifocal. Uh, where have you sailed from on your boat? You come from France and uh, after France uh, to Africa, to Chile, to Uruguay, to uh, Paraguay, to uh, Tahiti, uh, to Mexico, 
and uh, Panama and uh, Kingston in Jamaica. Is it just a pleasure cruise then, or have you lost your rudder? Because <laughs> yeah. I think I might have found it. Have you got a spare porthole? <laughs> Comprenez-vous? <laughs> Quel dommage. <laughs> Do you have any regrets? No. Regrets? No regrets. No, no regrets. Can no. you sing that song? No. No. Ah. No regrets. Do you ah. know? No. Ah. No, je n'en regrette rien. Ouais, no. <laughs> no. You don't sing at all? No, not at all. In your boat? No. No, no. no. Very sorry. <laughs> Now, when Polly arrived on the scene, she was a little ginger kitten. Ginger kitten. <laughs> and I, I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure even then about a, a ginger kitten, somehow. <laughs> ginger. Don't get me wrong, I'm not being rude about people with ginger hair. I think that can be quite nice, if you're going to a party or something. <laughs> Obviously, you can't go out during the day. <laughs> there are hats. I suppose. <laughs> anyway, it's by the by, my sister liked this little ginger kitten and um, she gave it a home. And uh, a couple of years ago, Polly had a stroke in the medical sense of the word. And consequently, she now looks at the world like this. <laughs> well, the cat world being what it is, a rather aesthetic kind of place. You need perky ears and whiskers and a swishy tail to get on in the cat world. The... <coughs> Poor old Polly. None of the other cats will have anything to do with her. Pussy non gratis in Wiltshire, I'm afraid. The other day, she, she was a bit more adventurous. She was just nestling, she went a bit further. She was just nestling by the rear wheels of a Ford Zephyr. <laughs> When the inevitable happened, I'm afraid, the, the driver got in and drove away, leaving this terrible mess behind that was Polly the cat. Well, my sister came along from the shops, from the mall, and she saw this mess on the floor, thought nothing of it, thought it was something the cat dragged in. Didn't realize it was the cat. Until some time later when she came back with a plastic bag and a spatula. <laughs> and she removed Polly from the tarmac, put her in this plastic bag and took her to the vet. <laughs> the vet said, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to put Polly to sleep. <laughs> She's already dozing. <laughs> My sister said, oh no, don't do that. Don't do that, I'll take Polly home. Maybe she'll get better. <laughs> well, I was intrigued. <laughs> and so, just before I came to New York, I popped down to Swindon with Fanny and uh, to deposit young Fanny for the duration of my stay in Swindon. And we were sitting there in the lounge. I didn't like to pry, and you know, we'd had our tea and our sandwiches. And I'd had a look at the children. <coughs> Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> No sign of the cat. Well, eventually, I said, is Polly around <laughs> at all? Any bit of her? <laughs> and my brother-in-law leapt to his feet. He's called Rob. <laughs> Rob. Very nice man, Rob. We get on very well, remarkably well, me and Rob. <laughs> Considering we're complete opposites, really, me and Rob. <laughs> There's a saying, wheelchair born and wheelchair bred. Strong in the arm and thick in the head. <laughs> and I can't, I can't, he's like a brother to me. Well, he is, he's his brother-in-law. And I couldn't really find fault with him. I couldn't, I couldn't find fault with Rob, even if you begged me. But if you begged me for long enough. <laughs> there's just one, and it's only a little thing, one aspect um, of, of, of his, um, Personality. Personality. Thank you, Russell. Where would I be without you? Broadway, perhaps. <laughs> Hardly his personality. It's just a, a... Well, I won't keep on. I'll tell you what it is. It's this. It's his diction. He won't open his mouth properly. It's, it's, it's a trivial thing, but I find it slightly irritating. So you say, hello, Rob, how are you? And he says, oh, no, darling. <laughs> and he's got a perfectly normal mouth. He, he can open it nice and wide when he's eating. 
but when he speaks, it's... And I said, I tend to overcompensate in his presence. I don't know why. I said, is Polly around? <laughs> and he said, I'll just go and get her. <laughs> and he went to the door and he, and he, he called her, Polly. <laughs> Polly. And eventually in she came and it was horrible. <laughs> I don't know if I can do justice to it. <laughs> No, I can't. <laughs> but it was this horrible orange and red swirling thing. I thought it was Princess Eugenia's afterbirth. <laughs> Something my sister was saving to make some chutney with. It's <laughs> the end of that one. <laughs> Ooh, it's King Kong. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be up the Empire State Building, wrestling with Fay Ray? <coughs> oh, yes, I get the idea. <coughs> oh, it's Roger. <coughs> Thank you. You look very stupid, Russell, by the way. Hear my voice where you are. Take a train. Steal a car, hop a freight, grab a star, come back to me. <laughs> what did you wear for your wedding? A veil? Yes. I think that's best. <laughs> plane, catch a breeze on your hands, on your knees. Swim or fly, only please come back to me. You don't care, do you? I don't care. He doesn't care. I don't care. With your hair in a net or a towel ringing when I don't care, this is where you should be. You wouldn't want an infected nipple, would you? Not, no, I wouldn't personally. From the hills, from the shore, ride the wind to my door, turn the highway to dust, break the law if you must. I'm worn out, traipsing these streets. I could do with a good kneel down. Where, oh where, in this great big city can Roger be? Roger. Oh, got my neck in. Well, there he is. There's a coincidence. I'll pop in here. Oh, well, that's a shame. Such a good turnout for him <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess these things do happen. You wouldn't well, cancel a show, would you? Not with a nice celebrity audience, Julian, Clary and Eartha Kitt, waiting to see you? Yes, well... Maybe you got lost. The wrong cab. Put in the wrong cab, who's on the wrong side of town, who knows what's happening Well, that's to easy him. to do in New York, because most of the cab drivers are foreigners, you know, they don't understand English very well. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been here to see any, any of the shows in this theatre? Um, I saw Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Very good, but no moustache. <laughs> Why are you so interested in Roger? Have you heard him whistling? Mm. It's marvellous. Do you ever go in search of a woman? No. Oh. Generally, generally not. Why not? Uh, um, well, it's not... I don't sit on that side of the church, Arthur. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Sort of in the middle of the back. Mm. I see. Have you ever been in search of a woman? No, not really. Yeah, well... No. We've got something in common, then. <laughs> oh, it comes with laughter. Can you hear the sound of, in the, the resonance in the theatre? Make a noise. Ha, 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 ha! Isn't that marvellous? Marvellous. What I don't understand is why they don't build more theatres like this, dome-wise, in, you know, in imitation of the Greek amphitheatre, because it makes a lot of sense. But people who are making uh, theatres these days, they seem to never ask the artist anything. This is a real dog or a pyjama case. <laughs> There's a bit of Velcro on Don't make fun of Abanaza. No. And look, you want to say hello to your British audience? Oh. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, yes, he's a sweetheart. 
beautiful. He's going to be mated. Oh, that's something to look forward to, isn't yes, it? I think he's already too anxious. We, maybe we found one for him in California. One that what? is from the same kennel in England. You found a what for a him? A girl for him. That's the way he in is, California? Julian. Yes. Mm. There's no sign of Roger yet. Mm. Do you think he'll ever show up? Are you doing panto this year? Right there, Miss Shields. Off with her hat, I'm afraid, quickly. It's a horrible mistake. It is, what? It's the sort of thing Fergie would wear. In oh. fact, I'm a bit worried about your whole outfit, the combination of the blue it's... and green and orange. Well, I mean, I was just trying on the hat. I don't necessarily have to wear it at the moment with this outfit. I mean, you just... <clears throat> yeah. My name's Julian, and I'm, I'm a guardian angel, all right? Not, not the sort of guardian angel you have on the subway uh, to stop you being mugged. I'm a, a guardian angel of fashion. Oh, really? Well, that's right. good. We all could use one of those. Yes, well, my, I had my work cut out for me in New York, I can tell you. Oh, really? <laughs> there's, there's so much of it about. I have to keep a constant eye on Woody Allen. Oh, of course, yes. You must be busy all the time. How long are you going to be here? Well, as long as it takes. People seem to have no idea of the hideous consequences of wearing corduroy. It must give you a, a rash every time you, you even see something like that. Do you... I'm covered in rashes. Are you really? Yes. Well, are you, I mean, is it a daily thing? Is it non-stop? Are you working It's long? non-stop. Non-stop. Sigourney Weaver wearing a tank top. Can you imagine? Oh. I guess it's just a no-no, huh? I think it's just a no-no. Oh, well, gosh, maybe you could help me. I mean, you know, I work in the fashion industry all the time, but I, that, everybody always prepares things for you, and they never you really... keep it very quiet? Well, <laughs> well, no, what happens is, you know, you work and say, as a model or something, but the outfits are already prepared for you, and as far as dressing yourself just normally, it's probably... You know, it's hard. I never know what to do. I mean, I see so many different things. Well, perhaps you've seen Roger somewhere, have you? You know, Roger, gosh, maybe about a week ago, but you know how he is. Where? I mean, he just, oh, it was just uptown on the Upper East Side. But he's, you know, he moves around so much, I can never keep track of him. Sometimes I get a message from him on my machine. He's not that but... quick, is he? Oh, he is. He's is really he? hard to get a hold of. Yeah. But, you know, you just have to wait. He'll come around. I feel very <laughs> safe here. You, you know? do. There's, there's a lot of places in New York I'm, I'm frightened to step out of my limousine, frankly. Oh, really? Well, maybe you shouldn't travel in a limousine. Maybe if you just traveled in a really low key car, it would, like, Oh, of course, sorry, I, I lost my head there for like, a minute. Like what? Like a Plymouth <laughs> like a, champ? Like a Jeep. No, I'd probably not. If you're comfortable, that's fine. You doing panto this year? Hmm? No. Igor, or my fine gentleman? A little better, sir. Eau oh, de Sante today? Joseph. Would you like scent to of Roger, sir? Scent of Roger? Where did you get that scent from? I was born with it. Not that scent, the scent of Roger. Well, I was just standing here and someone shoved it in my hand. I mean, I... You should be so lucky. Um, give me a little squirt, would you? If you wish, sir. Mm. Sort of hint of damp safari jacket. Well, it's terribly exclusive, sir. It's guaranteed to repel all living creatures. You must know something about where it comes from. Well, all I know is, sir, is it's got some associations with boats and the sea. Not the same associations as I've got, I don't suppose. I wouldn't imagine so, sir. Well, that's good enough for me. I'm going to head now for the ocean waves. Best of luck, sir. <laughs> Well, fancy bubbling into Quentin Chris on the Staten Island Ferry. How are you doing? I'm fine so far, not seasick yet. No, you've got your sea legs with you. More or less. <laughs> Do 
you go home? Do you go out and about much in New York? I go out and turn about Manhattan. But as you know, when the English say America, they mean New York. And when they say New York, they mean Manhattan. Yeah. I hardly ever leave Manhattan. You don't miss old England? Not really, no. No? I'm, uh, happiness rains down from the sky in New York. It's wonderful living here. Yes. Yeah, you felt that as soon as you arrived here? Even before I arrived really? here. Really? I've always been American in my heart, yeah. ever since I saw the movies. I knew if I could get here, I would find that everybody was beautiful and everybody was rich. And they are. Well, everybody is beautiful, but not everybody is rich. No, but it's a very sad sight. Very That's rich. true. New York is characterized by the fact that the splendor and the misery are woven together in a way I've never seen in any other city. Yeah, right next door to each other. In America, the people are kind and the system is ruthless. Right. If you are unproductive, one of the great American words, then you had it. In England, the people are hostile and the system is benign. Yeah. And the very old and the very young and ill-equipped to live will always be looked after them. You seen any bearded men around? Oh, yes, there are plenty of bearded men. Bearded policemen, I've seen. Yes. Yes, they're a bit, they're a bit, a bit aggressive here, aren't they, the policemen? Well, um, they're cosy, really. And after a bit, you, if you live here, you can soften them up. Yeah. They drive their cars at walking pace down 2nd Avenue, and if I look toward them, they go... And when I go over, they ask my name, and I tell them my name, and I say, am I illegal? <laughs> and they say, no, we just wondered how the show was going. And you can get in tanks. And you know, in England, you say, well, we'd better leave now. We may not get the tanks in yeah. half an hour. Here, you go out into the street, and you lift one pale hand, and a taxi arrives. If I could lift one pale hand and, and hail Roger Whittaker, do you think I'd find him? Could I have your attention, please? Well, Mr. Roger Whittaker, if you're on board, please report to the New York Pilot House. Mr. Roger Whitaker, please report to the New York Pilot House. Thank you. I was sitting on a plane the other day, like you do. I was actually on my way to Thailand. I, I wanted to experience the Golden Mount. <laughs> Turns out to be a Buddhist temple on a hill. <laughs> Gone all that way under a terrible misapprehension. <laughs> And uh, I, was, I was just sitting there looking forward to this and looking forward to the baggage reclaim because um, it's very often the highlight of the holiday for me, the, the baggage reclaim. I think that being a homosexual, I haven't bred any children at all, but I imagine that waiting for your children to come out of school at half past three <laughs> is really much the same sensation <laughs> as waiting for the baggage reclaim. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Because <laughs> my bag's always the last one out. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? It comes bounding out, though, eventually. Buckles all undone. <laughs> Waving some stupid drawing is done. <laughs> A picture of the hold. <laughs> oh, good heavens. It's LL Cool J wearing a hat. She likes to dance to the rap jams. She's sweet as brown sugar with the candy jams. Honey coated complexion using Cabernet. Let's see it for the girls. She's from around the way. You do this as well, don't you? I've seen what? you on the telly. For this? Or is it this? What's that? I well, don't know. I don't know any of that, Julie. Hold on, I've been misinformed. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs>
I would love to come to England. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I love, you know, I love Europe in general. I love the UK. It's a cool place. We're not really like the rest of Europe in England. No, you know, you're doing your own thing. Mm. But it's a nice groove over there, you know what I mean? And it is a very lovely groove. Mm, yeah, it's cool. You can't fault the groove in England. Standing at the bus stop, sucking on a lollipop. Once she gets pumping, it's hard to make the hottie stop. Do you, um, do you work out much? I work out some. I try to do some calisthenics. I do I, calisthenics. I do. You can see from my shoulders. Built, stacked. Do you want, do you want to poke me? No. Nah. <laughs> so you did poke me with his elbow. That's unusual. You haven't seen Roger Whittaker, have you? No, I haven't seen Roger lately. No, I haven't seen him ever, really, to be honest. Yeah, he must be no. somewhere. He's here somewhere. Mm. I've got a whiff of him. Roger! Are you there? No, he's not. Know. For some reason, I don't feel like he's gonna come running up to the limo out of breath. Well, he'd be out of breath even if he was walking, I think. <laughs> Poor old Roger. Is he out there? Roger! Try whistling. Can you whistle for him? No, I can't whistle, man. I can't whistle. He's famous for his whistling. He's hey. marvelous. <laughs> he's got a little moustache, not unlike yours. <laughs> but his is a bit fuller and bushier. Yo, this is like, yo. <laughs> this is another dimension. Word up. My grandma's got a hat like that. That's good. You got taste. I'll introduce you if you like. When I was just a little boy, I asked my mother, what lies ahead? Will I be handsome? Will I be rich? Here's what my mother said. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. It's a comfort to a small child, isn't it? Hey, Sarah, Sarah, what she was talking about. <laughs> then I grew up and fell in love. I asked my lover, what lies ahead? Will it be rainbows day after day? Here's what my boyfriend said. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, he was Spanish. Whatever will be, will be. I said, that's but just what my mother said. It's uncanny. Que sera, sera. Now, I have children of my own. They ask their father, how can this be? <laughs> you may be handsome. You may be rich. But who? Can our mother be? <laughs> so I told them, Hey, Sarah, Sarah, I got a bit drunk one night. Forgot if I was coming or going, or if I've already been. The rest is a blur, I'm afraid. Now go to bed at once, you children. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Hey, Sarah, Sarah. What will be, will be. What will be, will be. Que sera, sera. Que sera, sera. Thank you very much, and good night. <laughs> a lovely rest of the This looks like a good place to stop for a moment, Russell. Yeah. Take the weight off my sling backs. I'm covered in blisters, you know. Eh? I should never have gone to that club last night. I did tell you. Julian, look, look, over there, look. Oh, perhaps we're getting warm. There, look, look, there. Not to say moist. Well, no. Russell, look. Good grief. I think I'm in heaven. <laughs> Back in 1944, I remember Daddy. Mama told me he was going to war. Back 
Julian. Julian, look. Look. What is it? There's another ad in the paper. <coughs> Where? There. What do you want with an all-purpose sink plunger, Russell? You've got a girlfriend. The one below that, Julian. Desperately seeking Julian, N.M. N.M. Nana. Who? Nana Muscuri. She needs me. I'm coming, Nana. I'm coming. But what, what about Roger? What about him? Here we go again. Has anybody seen Julian? No. 